Dr. Richard Riccardi is a professor and director of strategic partnerships for the Center for Health Policy and Media Engagement at the George Washington University School of Nursing. Prior to, to joining George Washington, Dr. Riccardi served as a director, division of practice improvement and the senior advisor for nursing at the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality in the US. Dr. Riccardi's research re conducted at AHRQ focused on ambulatory care practice improvements in the areas of teams, team-based care, outcomes measurement, treatment of acute and chronic pain, and improving patient safety practices. Prior to joining AHRQ in 2010, Dr. Riccardi served on active duty in the Army for 30 years and had numerous positions as a pediatric and family nurse practitioner, clinical scientist, and senior leader. In his last two positions on active duty, he served as Chief of Nursing Research at the Walter Reed Army Medical Center and Director of Research at the Defense Centers of Excellence for Psychological Health and Traumatic Brain Injury. In addition to having experience in the clinical, research, educational, and health policy areas, Dr. Riccardi has served as a member of the Board of Directors on community and national level boards of several nonprofit corporations and associations. For example, he served as president of the National Association of Pediatric Nurse Practitioners, president for the National Association of Pediatric Nurse Practitioners Foundation, chair of the Sigma Building Corporation and treasurer and vice president of Sigma. Dr. Riccardi maintains a part-time nurse practitioner practice at a community-based clinic that serves uninsured and underserved populations and is honored to serve as current president of Sigma Theta Tau International. Thank you, Morgan. I appreciate that introduction. And more importantly, I really appreciate the opportunity to be with you all tonight. Uh, thanks, Doris, for the invitation. And uh, I really, really am excited to be uh, given the opportunity to provide a few thoughts. First, uh, it was great to hear from the members of parliament and listen to uh, uh, how much they valued us as nurses. But I can tell you as having the ear of nurses throughout the world representing over 135,000 nurses and we have chapters in over 100 countries we, and Sigma has over 500 chapters. The message uh, that your members of parliament were bringing are not unique to the province of Ontario. The message resonates quite well across the world where there is this tension and this perhaps misunderstanding and, and perhaps uh, lack of value in what the healthcare system and how healthcare contributes to the economic and prosperity of the sovereign nation. And I understand that members are challenged because they have to prioritize and they have to uh, really try to take all of the special interests into account while as well as trying to govern and run a province or a country. However, we all know that health and well being brings prosperity. And when thinking about how internationally we want to approach this problem, and Annette mentioned and others have mentioned around disparities, about how much has been brought forth through the pandemic, it, it really, I hope that members of parliament, members of Congress, elected officials throughout the world will commit and continue to recognize the importance of having a healthy workforce. It's not just about keeping the population healthy. It is about the economic prosperity of the nation and having the opportunities to drive uh, the, the market and the economy to such that your nation, your province, your local communities are thriving and bringing back. So when thinking about prioritization, when thinking about how can we inform members and how can the right policies be made, I, I urge everyone to not just think about health and wellness, but to think about productivity that that brings to the workforce. So 
e nurses has been said at the largest workforce. We're in the most important position to lead and to uh, effectively mitigate some of the challenges of the, of the disparities that we've seen and improving health equity. Those need to be further incorporated in policies at the local, national, and international level. So I bring you greetings from members throughout the world, the board of directors of Sigma, and I, I know that you all have been working very hard and you know, it's been mentioned many times about the sweat equity and, and how much nurses and all healthcare professionals have sacrificed. And as Annette said, the number of deaths, but not only in the nursing workforce, but in our physician colleague nurse force and, uh, and workforce and other health professions have sacrificed. So as we move forward and really think about solving this wicked problem, this most complex problem we call healthcare, and doing it in an efficient and evidence-based and effective way, we really need to think about how we can partner with our other healthcare colleagues in a way that we will provide value to the consumer, provide value to the government, and provide value to each other so that our interdependencies become a positive force and not something that we're going to argue over. No one owns the science. We all are part of the science of healthcare. But we, what we all need to work together and embrace our interdependencies to collectively uh, form a healthcare workforce that is efficient, effective, and, and supportive of each other. I know we can do it. I, I know that it's something that has to be done for us to be successful. And I know the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario has taken the lead in many of these different topics internationally, and they've been at the front. You all have been forcing the countries to become early adopters of what you all know to be the right way ahead. And so I applaud you, I thank you, and I appreciate you because the most important person in my life is an Ontarian. She is from uh, Toronto. She went to the University of Toronto. She graduated her undergraduate and master's degree, and she's Canadian. And I love her dearly, my wife. And so I have, a, I just, you know, I can't say enough about how much I love Canada, how much I love you all. And I know how wonderful a country Canada is, uh, not only because it borders North America, you know, it borders us, but I know the people. So I embrace you, I love you all, I wish you well, and, and, I, I, you know, I, and, and I empower RNAO to be the ambassador and the message bringer of evidence-based practice and of inf informing policymakers to do the right thing. Thank you, Doris, thank you everyone.